Yo, what's up everybody, it's Victon, here with my first League Start build guide for Scourge League. And I'm starting off with what I think is the best all-around build for minions, the Skeleton Mage Necromancer. And I'll start off by saying right off the bat that the build got around a 10-15% to damage nerf, which honestly really isn't too bad, considering that we were already doing more than enough damage in my opinion, but it did gain a ton of defenses on already one of the tankiest builds I've ever played. Overall, I'm really happy with where the build is at at all levels. The budget version, the medium budget version, and of course the min-max version. All are doing really well, and all of which we're going to be talking about today in this guide. The build has proven itself league after league to be incredibly successful, with countless people telling me that they love playing it, it was super smooth to level up and gear out, and that they easily took it to the in-game mapping and bossing content, and had a great time with it along the way. I definitely say that the build excels at map clear speed, and in this league I think it's going to be really important to be able to have a good clear speed build. That along with being able to start the build on a very low budget and get all the way to tier 16s, I think it's going to be a great pick for a league starter this league. It's also only a single gym swap away from doing really solid boss damage as well. I know it's a bit cliche to say, but the build really does have it all, and that's why it's been a super popular starter for several leagues now. Lastly, I did this build and was killing the feared with it very comfortably and was doing a pretty tough juiced tier 16 maps as well. So again, like I said, it kind of had everything that I needed and was super tanky. It was actually the best build that I think I played all league and was the one that I died the least on and took it all the way to level 98. Also, I wanted to give you guys an idea of what this guide will go over so you can get a good idea before you spend time watching it. So I've got an updated POB for both the League Start version and the Min Max version, so you guys can see how you'll progress your character as you gear up over time. I'll also be including a leveling guide for your gems, and a custom leveling loot filter for this build, all to make your League Start as smooth as possible. From there, I also have a spreadsheet that comes with trade links to every single piece of gear that you're going to want to buy or craft, all the way from the budget version up to the Min Max version. And lastly, I'm trying out something new, so let me know if you guys like it, but I'm going to be using the Better PoE Trading App extension to create a folder specifically for this build that has direct links to all gear within the Path of Exile trading website. It's super cool. No spreadsheet needed. It's embedded in the trade website. I'm personally going to be using this app with my build when I leak start. Lastly, before we dive into the path of building, I just wanted to mention that I do stream on Twitch, so if you guys ever have a question, feel free to come on over there. I'm definitely going to be streaming this League Start. I'm always happy to help you guys out in any way that I can with my builds or any builds in general. The link's going to be in the description below for my Twitch. Also, if you're interested in supporting the channel, I do have a Patreon, which is going to be linked below as well, and that's going to get you access to my Discord community where I do personal build reviews all the time, so I'm happy to help you guys out one-on-one -on -one there. Alright, so enough of that, let's hop right into the guide, and feel free to check timestamps below if you want to skip around to certain parts of the guide. Alright, and here we are in the first path of building, this is going to be the League Starter version. Now, as always, uh, I do have down here the leveling pass for all of your points, so if you want to, you can go ahead and follow this all the way from level 1, all the way up to, I think I have it at level 95 is the max, right around level 95, you'll probably be wanting to go up to the min max version or at least kind of make your way there so i have a full different pob for that because it'll be a little bit different but we'll go ahead and talk about the pob here for the league start now as you can see down here we are i'll kind of go over like the dps numbers the defense layers all that sort of stuff before we go into the more specifics just so you guys can get a kind of overview of what's going on here so we got about almost 4 million dps and this is in completely poo poo gear uh, this is definitely going to be probably under one exalt worth of gear, like maybe one and a half worth uh, of exalt. So really, really bad gear. Definitely, you know, you can achieve this in the first couple of days. Uh, you can honestly even play this solo cell found up until you need the dead reckoning jewel, which we'll talk about here in a second. That is, of course, the jewel that gives you skeleton mages in the first place. But point being is it's very, very cheap to get this going. And 3.6 million DPS is pretty solid. And that's your bossing damage. Uh, for mapping, it's going to be slightly different. Let's go over here and check that out. We'll uncheck slower projectiles because you will be doing a gym swap. You're going to be swapping projectiles, slower projectiles here for volley. So you go down to almost about 3 million DPS, so really not that much of a difference between your mapping and your single target boss damage. So let's go ahead and go back over to the tree. Now we do have a respectable amount of life at about 6,000 life. 
uh, only about 600 uh, ES. We do have a lot more ES in the min max version, but it's a little bit different of a build. Uh, but 6,000 is not too bad. Almost 1,000 energy shield. Again, not too bad. We are going to be freeze immune with the soul of the Brine King. This has been updated this league. You're going to want to capture that and upgrade it. And you're going to be able to get the, uh, it's that corruptor. I don't even know how to say that word, Ediag, something like that. But instead of you cannot be frozen if you've been frozen recently, that has been updated. It is now just simply you cannot be frozen. Very, very strong. So that's how we're going to counteract being frozen. We're going to go with Soul of Aberrath as our second one, and that's going to help us out with Ignite. Um, so we also have, we'll go ahead and skip on over here to the skill section. We're going to be, and just so you guys know, it says Arctic Armor, but that's actually Tempest Shield. It's not updated in POB yet, so just make sure. I'll even put this here, Tempest Shield. Just so you guys know, I'm going to uncheck that. The reason I did this is because I needed this to use for the mana modifiers, just to make sure we had enough mana. So that's why it says Arctic Armor. We're not using that. We are using Tempest Shield, just so you guys know. So Tempest Shield has been changed. That is now giving us two things that is absolutely phenomenal. One, it's giving us immune to shock, which is very, very good in itself. And it's also giving us up to 25% chance to block spells while holding a shield. That is absolutely crazy. So very, very strong. So we're going to be immune to freeze and immune to shock, which is pretty strong in itself. We're gonna be having a pretty good block chance over here uh, at 61.52. And I think that is with a roomies, yes, correct. That is with a roomies check. So without that, you're gonna meet a base of 36.37. So not bad at all for block chance. And that is again, without uh, going glancing blow. So we're not going glancing blow. So you're gonna get your full effect of the block. Pretty strong. Uh, we, of course, are going to have uh, max resistances. It's very easy to cap resistances as a Necromancer. Uh, with my very, very, very bad gear, I only came up to 3% Chaos Res, but with even just a little bit better gear, you can easily get that up to like 50, 60, 70% Chaos Res, no problem. Every time that I have League started the, this build, I've been able to cap my Chaos Resistances pretty easy as well. So that's another layer of defense that's pretty solid. Now, we don't have that much armor. We do have... Uh, about 5.6k a lot of that is coming from the roomies uh so about two and a half but with the changes to the way armor is working um it's gonna make it a little bit easier to get some nice physical damage reduction as well so 30 percent up to 50 percent is not too bad uh, and that is with a flesh crafter chest which we'll again talk about here in a second kind of jumping around here apologies for that but up until you get a flesh crafter's chest you'll probably have an armor body shield or armor energy shield so you'll have even more armor than that uh, it'll probably be around 55 percent physical damage reduction so not too bad but the main thing here is just we're gonna have a lot of block chance we're gonna have a lot of life uh, and of course we're gonna have you know the minions in general for us having vol summon skeletons is incredibly nice uh, because there's six gajillion of those dudes kind of out there tanking for you so it's pretty nice um, okay, cool. So that is kind of the basics of the build. Good defenses and good offenses and very, very cheap. Now let's go into the specifics here. And I won't go over too much because this is kind of the same as some of the stuff that we've been doing, but I did have to change up a few things. Uh, but I'll go over the, the basics here. Of course, the most important thing you guys need to know is, it's up here, uh, Dead Reckoning Jewel. Get this as your first purchase of the league. Uh, it ranges in price between leagues, but it's usually around 10 to 20 chaos. Uh, and you should save up all of your chaos and this should be your first purchase this is what's going to enable the build in itself it gives you the ability to summon skeleton mages so once you get that put that in this slot right here and you will be good to go now the second most important thing which doesn't come into play until probably around mapping uh, once you're able to buy this medium cluster jewel this probably should be your second purchase uh, is a you can probably even buy a super cheap one and just craft it yourself by the way and i have all those trade links in the description uh, so don't worry about that but anyways you're going to be crafting this and the most important thing here is to get blessed rebirth it is so incredibly amazing for your quality of life for this build minions created recently cannot be damaged so recently is four seconds so anytime you summon a skeleton they have four seconds of immunity from damage now they don't have a lot of life so 
Enabling this is basically going to give you so much damage and uptime of your damage because you can just resummon them basically every four seconds if you need to if they're taking damage. But this is a huge quality of life change uh, getting blessed rebirth. So that's probably going to be, you know, one of your first bigger purchases. It's actually not bigger purchase. I shouldn't say that. One of your first purchases in general. It's all in probably going to be about five to ten chaos on the first day to get a cluster jewel like this. And remember that you can get up to the five passive. You don't need a four passive you can get a four or five passive and be totally fine. Um, as far as the tree itself, I guess I can go over some of the minion masteries over here. There's really not that many good ones for us. Um, most of these are, are just not really doing too much for us. The, the couple ones that I will talk about though is this one, 20% increase effective offering, which is nice for our flesh offering. And the second one that we're gonna be going with is this one, the min minions penetrate 8% of cursed enemies elemental persistences now you only are going to pick that if you are not using a flesh crafter chest i uh, will go over flesh crafter here in a second with the gear but it is an option you can either use flesh crafter or not use flesh crafter um, i would say not using flesh crafter is going to be a little bit more expensive and using a flesh crafter is definitely the cheaper option so if you are using flesh crafter you're not going to be doing this the only minion passive uh, offensive mastery that you're going to be getting is this one right here the increase effect of offerings which is your flesh offering uh, so let's go ahead and assign that now this one is pretty important though uh, so this is a pretty nice one uh, this is going to be with your mana efficiency that's how they have changed it now to allow us to basically get more uh, auras for us noobs compared to all those guys running 20 auras right so now we can get four or five pretty easily if you just get this wheel and you'll be good to go now this is pretty important though, get all of these and then take Reservation Mastery for an additional 15% mana reservation efficiency. Once you get that, you should be able to run all of your auras and feel pretty comfortable. Uh, perfect. So of course, we're going to, I'll just say this real quick, Lord of the Dead uh, is very important as well as Death Attunement for those plus two to skeletons. Very, very important there. Um, there's really not too much else to talk about here. We are going to be making sure that we grab these nodes. We don't get these until later on, probably around level 80 or so, but just some nice extra block chance. Same thing with this node here, a little bit extra block chance. They've definitely moved some things around with this tree. For example, uh, Ravenous Horde is kind of up here now, which is a little funky, but it's all right. Um, and everything else, like I said, is pretty similar to what we've been doing in past leagues. Uh, make sure you pick up this dex note if you need it. Some of you guys might not need it, depending on your gear, but just know that you can pick that up if you need to. We are, of course, anointing grave attentions. This is a fantastic change that they made. Uh, so it used to be minions gain 10% of maximum life as extra maximum energy shield. Very, very good that it moved up to 20%. So that's really good for your non-skeleton mages. So for example, if you're running an anime guardian, if you're running specters, stuff like that, it's very, very good for them. They're going to get 20% extra life, basically. And also minions have 27% chaos resistances. Now that is crazy. That is a ton of chaos resistance. Uh, now, the reason that this is pretty good is because if we are using Fleshcraft, we're talking about Fleshcrafter quite a bit in this guy, so we'll go ahead and talk about it right here. Uh, so, minions convert 2% of their maximum life to maximum energy shield per 1% chaos resistance they have. Now, the reason this is really good is because minions, uh, while minions, while your, your skeletons, basically is all we care about, right, is your skeletons have energy shield, their hits ignore monster elemental resistances. Basically, what that means is that they have zero elemental resistances. Now you'll see right there, nearby enemies have minus 50 elemental resistances. I manually edited that into here because actually Flesh Crafter doesn't work in Path of Building, so I had to manually input that to make sure that the damage actually shows. Just so you guys know that, that's, that's a manual input. Um, <clears throat> so that is why it's very, very good. Basically, you get to do this instead of doing other stuff like uh, energy shield, sh or not energy shield, um, elemental resistance is shredding or um you know elemental weakness stuff like that it's just really easy you just get that base 50 percent elemental pin basically is what it is um so it's very very good it's very cheap and it's easy peasy these are usually like two to five chaos a piece obviously getting a six link is going to be a little bit more but they're usually very very cheap and very very good damage if we take this off watch the dps it goes from 3.6 million to 2 million so quite a big chunk for this chest piece right here now one of the things that is important with grave intentions as you can see that we get 27% chaos res, right? You actually don't want more than 50% chaos res 
with Flesh Crafter. If you do, it's going to instantly kill your skeletons when they spawn. It's just, as you can see, it converts their life into energy shield. So we can't convert more than 50% of their life into energy shield. So they can't have more than 50% chaos res or they'll instantly die. So ideally you would want like up to 49%. Whoops, I'm getting a call. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's turn that down. Um, so you ideally want 49% chaos res, right? And that would turn it into their life being, I think, what, 98% energy shield and 2% um, life. So that would be ideal. Now, if we, they have a base of 20%, by the way. So that's what's important. So 20% plus 27 is 47. So it works out perfectly. Basically, their whole life is going to be converted to energy shield. And they're pretty much always going to be on... Uh, almost max energy shield so that being the case they're going to almost always have that penetration of elemental resistances so a little long-winded there but i just want to make sure that people aren't getting too much chaos resistance on their gear because it will not work with flesh crafter if you anoint the grave intentions there it'll actually kill your skeleton so pretty important to mention that uh, but that's pretty much it for the actual skill tree itself let's go ahead and go over to the skills uh, and I will, of course, put a link in the description for the gym links guide that I have and also the leveling guide for your gym links. So check that out if you're interested in kind of using that while you level up the build. Uh, all right. So as the leveling, not the leveling, as the leak start version, uh, we are going to be using a six link chest that changes in the uh, min max version to we put in our helmet. But for now, we're going to be using a six link chest. And there's a couple things to note here. So of course, Vol Summon Skeletons is what you should be trying to get. Uh, it's very, very good. It adds a ton of damage when they're out. Watch this, 3.6 up to almost 6 million. So it's almost doubling. Uh, so very, very good. And you're actually able to get the Vol Summon Skeletons out almost 100% of the time when mapping. Uh, so it's really, really nice. Uh, so get as much out as you can and you'll be doing mega damage. Uh, so get Vol Summon Skeletons. After that, we're going to be going LA Focus, Minion Damage, Spell Echo, and for mapping, we're going to be going Volley and Pierce. Uh, very, very important here. Uh, I would say your four link is going to be Vol Summon Skeletons, Volley, Pierce, and uh, either Minion Damage uh, until you get Spell Echo or LA Focus. You can probably do either one. Maybe LA Focus would probably be better. Um, and then once you get Spell Echo at level 38, you would put that. So it would be Vol Summon Skeletons, Spell Echo, Volley, and Pierce. And then for a boss situation, you would remove Volley and you would put in slower projectiles. So that's how you do the bossing versus the mapping. Uh, for our helmet, we're going to be going with Spectres. Now, of course, these are going to be support Spectres because uh, we want them to be buffing our damage of our mages as much as possible. Uh, with that, we're going to be going with two Carnage Chieftains and two host chieftains, or two Carnage chieftains and one host chieftain, depending on the level of your race specter gem. Uh, you get those in Act 7, the Ashen Fields. Uh, until you get the, up until Act 7, I think what, you can get Stygian Silverbacks in Act 2, in what, the wetland, not the wetlands, it's the one directly to the left of the, uh, the camp. <clears throat> and that's basically the same thing as uh, Carnage chieftains. <clears throat> and as far as gems we're going to be going with race specter of course and then the most important one actually to use is life tap after that because those carnage chieftains and host chieftains will not actually use their abilities if they're on mana they'll use it once and then it takes forever for their mana to regain so we want life tap so they're using it on or life and they're using it pretty frequently we also of course want feeding frenzy so that we can get that nice juicy damage buff and then minion life to get some extra life on our specters so they survive a little bit longer uh, once you get into min max version we're actually going to be switching <clears throat> excuse me the minion life for an animate guardian if you like that play style if you don't like that play style you can just stick with minion life and you'll be just fine uh, moving on here to our weapon one this is going to be Desecrate, Flesh Offering, and Summon Stone Golem. Now, it's important that you have this in your weapon one, because we are going to be trying to get a trigger socket. It spells when you use a skill. <clears throat> <clears throat> so 
So it's a trigger wand that is going to be automating casting your Desecrate and Flesh Offering and Stone Golem. So if that guy dies all the time, don't even worry about it. He's going to get resummoned and he'll be just fine. So that is important to put it in your weapon one once you get the trigger socket it spells when you use a skill. Uh, which should be pretty easy to get this weapon early on. It should only be like 10 to 20 chaos at absolute max. It probably won't even be that much. So really not too bad. Uh, moving on to our auras here, we do have Summon Skitterbots. We have Zealotry with Generosity. Those are, let's actually move that up. Not sure why those are 18. Very nice. Um, so those are going to be our auras, and we can put that in our second weapon, which is going to be in our, uh, our shield. Uh, moving on to our gloves here, we have Sniper's Mark Stormbrand with Hex Touch. So this is our curse. Our curse is going to be Sniper's Mark. It adds a ton of damage. Um, and so let's check this out. 3.6 million down to 2.8. So that adds almost 30 something percent damage, more damage, crazy. That's really only good for bosses, but you can do it for tougher packs like yellow mobs and stuff like that. But uh, pretty good here. If you don't want to do a curse on hit, you could of course just curse sniper's mark yourself uh, and then remove these two links. It's up to you. Uh, and then of course we said, like I said earlier, we, it's not Arctic armor, it's Tempest shield. Um, so Tempest Shield, I just don't have this right now because it is not updated in Path of Building. So Sniper's Mark, Stormbrand, Hex Touch, Tempest Shield. Moving on, we have our Ring 1, which is going to be Convocation, and our Ring 2, which is going to be your choice here. You can either do Clarity or Vitality. I think that I'm going to do Clarity because it's going to give you a pretty good amount of mana regen. It's going to give you 100 mana regen, and Skeletons are actually kind of a lot of mana. Uh, so basically you would either choose clarity or vitality and if you don't choose clarity let's say you choose vitality then you would need to run a an enduring mana flat enduring eternal mana flask in order to kind of be able to cast your skeletons uh, pretty comfortably um the difference here is going to be 577 life regen versus you know 400 so it's a decent amount of life regen if you would prefer to do vitality so you might feel a little bit safer doing that uh, I would rather have the convenience of being able to cast things a little bit easier, so I'm going to go with Clarity here. And that is the Gem Links. Um, so let's go ahead and move on over to the items. We've talked about quite a few of these already, but we'll just kind of breeze through it here. Uh, there's weapons. Uh, the first weapon, of course, is going to be a plus one all spell skill gems and an open suffix, so you can either uh, craft this yourself or if it comes on it already, that would be perfect. Trigger socketed spell when you use a skill. These are super cheap. These are gonna be like five to 10 chaos. Absolutely no problem. Uh, you could do a different weapon. You could get a weapon with something like here. You know what, I actually think I have it. Yep, you could get a weapon like this instead. Uh, minions deal increased damage and minions have increased attack speed. Uh, super cheap, as you can see, it was seven chaos to get this. They're actually about the exact same damage, literally the same damage. So it's just, do you prefer to have one where you can automate your casting? Or do you not? So if you don't have one that you can do the trigger on, I would go for one like this, just for a little bit extra damage. Uh, for your shield, these are always super, super cheap. Um, very, very nice. I think, that, what, like five chaos max. They have really good armor, really good life. Uh, the only problem is they make you a little bit slower, but it's really not that big of a deal. And I, I wonder if this is gonna be a little bit less armor now. I think they might adjust it, either, even if it is. It's gonna be still very, very good. Uh, now you will notice that it has that 25% chance to block spell damage. Don't worry about that. I'm Again, I manually inputted that. That is Tempest Shield. Basically, Tempest Shield is that because it's not working in Path of Building. So I just wanted to make sure we could actually get it working. Uh, so Lion's Eye Remorse does not have that. I manually inputted that. Just want you guys to know that. So this is a very, very good shield. Super cheap, has great armor, has great life. For our helmet, we're gonna be crafting these ourselves. Basically, all you need is a level 68 plus Elder Helmet and you're gonna be crafting it with bound fossils. And we're gonna be looking for minion life on there or minion gem levels. And then of course, if you can get some life, some resistances, some decks, all that is also good stuff. And that's where we're gonna put our specters in there uh, because we want them to have as much life as possible. Now, if you do have life on here, you will of course switch, let's see, let's go back to specter. You won't wanna do both, right? So you would switch it to something else. You could do something like elemental army. That would be pretty solid or you could do something like Meat Shield. I would suggest Elemental Army, personally. Going back to here, uh, the Flesh Crafter. We've already talked about this quite a bit. It is a very solid DPS chest, uh, so a really good option there, and it's usually pretty cheap. Uh, I would say start using this as a five link over a rare six link. 
uh, but don't use it over if you only have like a four link flesh crafter i would prefer to use a six link just regular rare body armor until you can get at least a five link flesh crafter and at that point you can go ahead and switch over and use this for your gloves super easy gloves here just life and resistances and if you can get some dexterity fantastic if not don't worry about it uh, for your boots this is a super cheap option as well. Uh, very good because it gives us plus one to maximum number of skeletons. Uh, not anything else too crazy, just a little bit of move speed, a little bit of chaos res, uh, a little bit of increased strength, but again, that's really not what we're looking for here. We're looking for that plus one to maximum number of skeletons, uh, which is very good. Now, one thing you can note is there's a craft for your helmets that's gonna give you plus one to zombies and skeletons. So if you have that craft already, definitely throw it on your helmet. If you don't, maybe you can buy one with it um, or not. But just note that you can actually get plus one to skeletons on your helmet, but it comes from the June crafting. So you have to unveil it. But once you unveil it, definitely put that on your helmet because it's very, very good. Uh, moving back to the amulet here, we have basically a pretty normal amulet, which literally is just life and resistances. But of course, the big one there is plus one to maximum number of skeletons. Uh, very, very important here to also get as much dexterity on this as possible because we are short on dexterity and we need it for Sniper's Mark. Uh, allocates Grave Intentions, we already talked about that. It's actually pretty cheap of an anoint as well, so you can get that pretty early on. For your rings, both of these are going to be pretty basic rings. Uh, they're going to have just life and resistances as much as possible. Life and resistances as much as possible. Again, if you can get some dex, that would be nice. And also some chaos res, that would be nice as well. Uh, for your belt, this is a three chaos belt which is Darkness Enthroned, which you're gonna put two Abyssal Jewels in here, and they're gonna have minions deal increased damage if you've done a minion skill recently, and also if you can get some other things like, for example, cold damage, minions deal extra cold damage, minions deal extra lightning damage, minions uh, have increased cast speed, those are very, very good, or you can get some life on there as well. So those are two examples of what you could get right there. Uh, moving down to our jewels here, and then we'll go up to our flasks, we have, uh, th like I said, just a super basic jewel here. That's another example. It would be better to have one like that. Just a little bit more damage. Uh, we actually have anatomical knowledge. These are usually pretty cheap as well. You have to specifically put this one right here and it's gonna give you a ton of life. Let's take it off and I'll show you guys. 5.9 to 5.6, so a good 300 life for that jewel. Pretty solid. Uh, and it's usually pretty cheap as well. Fortress Covenant is a pretty solid jewel as well. Uh, these are about 10 to 20 chaos. It really depends on the market, uh, but they give you some nice defenses for your minions and also a pretty good chunk of damage as well, up to 45% increased damage. So not too bad. One thing that is important to note though, is that you do want it right here. You have to have it right here. You have to have it on a cluster jewel. You cannot have it somewhere in here because then it will make, for example, like this node would not work, uh, which would be very bad. But going back to the items, Let's go over our flasks, because our flasks are pretty important. So like I said earlier, we are immune to freeze and we are immune to shock. We are not immune to ignites. So we are gonna be using chemist ruby flask of dousing or just a ruby flask of dousing in general. And then we're going to, um, we're going to enchant it to used when you become ignited. Uh, so we're going to fully automate this flask and anytime that we get ignited, it will instantly remove it. And we'll also be, uh, we'll take less fire damage. We have more fire resistance. Uh, so very, very good. That'll basically make us immune to all elemental ailments. And then we're going to go with a quartz flask of staunching because we do not have on our uh, on our ascendancy, which I actually haven't talked about yet. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Usually you go with bone barrier when you take a necromancer build, but we're not gonna do that. One of the good things about bone barrier is the actual bone armor skill, which makes you immune to bleeding. But since we're not taking that, we do need that flask with has staunching on it. The reason we're doing that is because we're actually going to go with Mistress of Sacrifice, which is very, very good for us for increased skill effect duration, uh, which is very good for our skeletons. The first one that you do want to pick up when you're leveling is Mindless Aggression. From there, you're going to go to Unnatural Strength. Your third is going to be Commander of Darkness, which really helps with Elemental Resistances as a new character in a league. And then very lastly, you're going to take Mistress of Sacrifice. Moving back to our items here, that was the reason for the Quartz Flask of Staunching. And it's going to be pretty nice if you do bleed, we're going to anoint that, or I'm sorry, we're going to enchant that with used when you start bleeding. So again, it's going to be automated so that if we ever start bleeding, it's going to automatically use. We're going to get some phasing 
and we're going to be able to move through mobs and kind of just run away from the situation. So I feel like that was the best option for that one. And then you could, of course, just go with a regular Quicksilver flask of adrenaline. And then from there, we have that Rumi's concoction. These are usually relatively cheap, somewhere between 10 and 15, 20 chaos, something like that, depending on the roll. Uh, if you want, you can enchant this with 50% increased effect, which is pretty nice. It's gonna give you a whole bunch of extra goodies. And then for our life flask, we have Blood of the Karui. The reason I like using this is because we have such high life that it instantly recovers that life after two and a half seconds, and it's the full life heal. So pretty good for builds that have really high life. Awesome, that was all the tree, the gear, the skills. Let's go ahead and show you a couple extra things, and then we will be done. So let's go to this right here. Skeleton mages. So this is the, uh, this is what I was talking about with the spreadsheet. So this is all the goodies that you guys want to come and see if you want to kind of learn how to progress from your league starter up to like a medium version of the build up to the min maxed version of the build. Blue being league starter, purple being kind of like a mid-level build, and then red being your min maxed version. And we've got some notes in here, and we've got it for every single slot in here as well. Basically, it's super easy for you guys. I have the, the cost as well of what you're kind of expecting to pay. Literally just click on the link, and it takes you right here to the actual item that you need to buy. I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for you guys. So a lot of people have been enjoying that, so I'm happy to have updated that for this build and this league. Um, from there, we do have, like I mentioned, we have the Skeleton Mage. We're gonna go, yeah, it's the Skeleton, it's the Spectre as well, but we're just gonna focus on Skeleton Mages this league. So leveling a Skeleton Mage, this is the actual leveling process with all of your gems. Uh, so if you wanna take a look at that, feel free. It's gonna be linked in the description as well. And like I said in the very beginning as well, we also have a custom leveling loot filter, and we're going to be using this one right here, Summoner Leveling. Uh, so really, really good. It's going to highlight all of the items that you need to be picking up along your leveling process, specifically for the like colors. Um, so for example, like a four link blue item, it would highlight that, do a blue beam, make it very clear like, hey, pick this up. Uh, so really good for leveling summoners click that one and you want to hit follow. So for me, it says followers, but for you guys, it would say follow right there. So you're gonna click that and follow that. And lastly, like I said in the beginning as well, not only do I have the uh, spreadsheet itself, but we've also started something new. So there is a app that you can get for Chrome, for Firefox, and what I use here is Opera GX. Um, and the Opera GX actually can use the same extension that Chrome does. Firefox, I think, uses a different extension, but it's called Better PoE Trading. Uh, you can find it right here. I'll put this in the description. Uh, and you can just click up here, install the application. A ton of people are using this, and it's got really, really good reviews. Like, there's no issues. It, it's been really, really solid so far. There's no, like, security issues. I know there was a couple questions about that, but there's, there really isn't any. Uh, so it's all good to go. So basically what this does, is you can basically take my entire spreadsheet over here and I can put it in a little folder and I can share this with you guys. And it's gonna be the exact, basically the same thing, but it's embedded within the trade website. So super cool. So like watch, Dead Reckoning, first purchase, right? So you just click it and there you go, takes you right there. And you can also, you know, what I would be doing, right, is setting up, um, let's do it like an active live search, right? So like I would set up an active live search uh, maybe even come in here and spe specify, like, I don't want to pay more than 10 chaos for a dead reckoning. And I would do that, and I would activate a live search, and any time that a item gets posted that's under 10 chaos, that's a dead reckoning, it'll pop up here. And that's not a feature of necessarily better trading, but it just makes it really easy for you to kind of go between all of your searches, and you can save your searches going forward. Um, and just organize it a little bit better, so pretty cool. And if the way that you're gonna do this is you actually hit import folder, right? So I will save it as a, I don't think I can save it as a paste bin. It'll be like a text bin file. Paste bin doesn't like better trading for some reason, but uh, I think it's called like text bin or something like that works just fine. I've had tons of people use it and I say it's, it's just fine. It's basically the same thing. So you're gonna take that, you're gonna copy that link and you're gonna go to import folder and you just import the code right there, save, and then that's it, easy peasy. It pops up right here for you. Uh, click that and then go through all the juiciness that I've already made for you guys. And I'm just, again, I've made it as easy as possible for you guys. Um, 
to level this build up, have a good time playing it, be successful in the league, and I indeed hope that you <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> indeed hope that you guys are successful in the league and y'all are having a good time with the build. Uh, I think the very last thing I wanted to mention is I'm also going to include the path of building for the min max version. Uh, so just if you guys wanted to see it and kind of see where the min max version is at. Um, super, super crazy build. Like I said, this is the tankiest build that I've probably ever played. You're at 75, 65 with block chance. Uh, you recover 5% of ES and life on block. We have 2200 ES, 7,000 life. Uh, we're at that max chaos res of 75% uh, with the glorious vanity. Why is that not working? Um, Oh, I'm sorry, not Glorious Vanity. Huh. With the, uh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're doing the Corrupted Soul one. Sorry about that. I get my Stone Golems and this one mixed up a little bit right there. Uh, all good. So we have enough Energy Shield. to That's where it's coming from. We're getting a lot of extra Energy Shield from our life. And the reason we're doing that is, like I said, because of the shield um, that gives Recover 5% of Energy Shield and life when you block. So you're going to be blocking all the time and regenerating a ton of ES and a ton of life. It's a really, really good kind of double... Um, defensive layer pretty solid and then for our DPS we we went down from 16 million last league to we almost yeah to 11 million so kind of a decent hit with the uh, elemental equilibrium loss right which definitely sucks but honestly 11 million is, is totally fine um, I was clearing the feared before I got to that 16 million damage point and was doing just fine of course I was doing it white um, but really not a big deal I think that's pretty solid for any minion build that's not like a syndicate operative build uh, you know past leagues of course it's gonna be different this league but i think 11 million damage is is totally fine especially for how tanky this build is um so overall i think it's a super solid build check this out if you want to see kind of how to level up the build once you are finished with the quote unquote league start uh, there's some juicy bits in here that i won't go over now i'll definitely cover it when we do the actual build guide update for this uh, but if you kind of want a little sneak peek check this pob and get ahead of the curve yeah i think that's all i got for this one guys that was kind of a long video but i hope you guys got a lot out of it y'all enjoy the build if y'all do play it and if y'all do let me know in the comment section let me know how it's going for you guys pretty much everybody has always loved this build so i'm hoping that uh we, we love it again this league and it's and it's fantastic and it works for you guys and y'all enjoy it so i think that's all i got for this one guys i will catch y'all in the next one which will be a stone golem both necromancer and elementalist i'm super hyped for that one so if you're interested in that check that out as well all right thanks guys i'll catch you on the next one